my name is Rachel Conley and I am a second year master's student in wildlife at Auburn School of Forestry and Wildlife Sciences. I am studying canebrake restoration and propagation and uh, cane breaks are made up of river cane which is our native bamboo to North America. It's in the genus Arundinaria and there are three different subspecies they're the only native bamboos to North America. A lot of people think of Asia, specifically Southeast Asia for bamboos, but we actually have one that is native to our home right here. So currently I am out planting all my propagules from last March. So they're almost a year old and they're ready to go in the ground and we're planting them very similar to pine plugs. So when you buy containerized pine seedlings, you have a small plant that has a root ball uh, that has a very you know narrow plug as we call it so I'm kind of treating cane like we would pine in the nursery uh, part of forestry and um, I'm planting in lower Alabama as well as western Tennessee and very shortly here I will be propagating before it gets too warm for my next year of river cane crop. For the Atmore trip, we were working on Rachel Conley's MS project, which was looking at um, the only native bamboo in uh, the southeast that's called river cane. And she was looking at it from a habitat restoration standpoint. She's trying to figure out dependable ways of propagating it. Um, so it mostly involves weekend trips down to Atmore with undergrad student hey, workers. Who are basically getting good, solid, paid experience. Um, Rachel did a good job of making sure that they understood the experimental design, um, so that it wasn't just you know them down there digging holes and putting cane in it. That it was actually the undergrads getting a chance to understand how research is done and designed. So this is Arundinaria gigantea river cane, also known as giant cane or switch cane in some areas of the country. It is, like I said, a native bamboo, and a bamboo means a woody grass. So this is a grass, however, it puts on woody growth in what's known as the culm or stem of a grass plant. And it is native to the entire southeast it actually extends to parts of southern Pennsylvania and as far west as eastern Texas and up into Missouri. So it has a pretty extensive range. It prefers a temperate climate to subtropical climate. There are different varieties of cane. There's a coastal plain variety known as Arundinaria tecta, which is what you would see you know, in the sand hills of North Carolina, lower Alabama, the panhandle of Florida, and then there is a very unique subspecies called Arundinaria appalachiana, which is found in the mountains of the Appalachians, and it is semi-deciduous, unlike switch cane and giant cane that are known for retaining their leaves throughout the winter. Um, she was looking at shade treatments and fertilizer treatments, so the first weekend, um, she went down with a few people who were experienced builders and they built shade houses, uh, basically just the same type of structure you would build for like a carport, except instead of a solid roof, there was shade cloth. Um, so she did 80% shade cloth and 50% shade cloth, and then she had open plots. Um, and then the second time, which is the first time that I personally went, um, we pre-dug all of the holes in which to plant the cane uh, and kind of just finished building the houses and straightening everything up. Um, and the main difficulty there was that you can't build a permanent structure. Like you couldn't use concrete to hold the structure in the ground. So there were a lot of limitations on the actual building too. So there was a lot of time spent straightening houses and uh, making sure that they would still be standing when we came back. And then this third time, uh, Rachel and an undergrad student worker had gone up to Kentucky where the samples had actually been grown at, a, I believe, a Roundstone uh, nursery. And she brought the samples down in a U-Haul truck and myself and a bunch of undergrad student workers met 
and we got them in the ground and actually planted them. How many samples were there? Close to a thousand. I can't remember the exact number offhand.